Big Data and Data Analytics Part A. Discuss how information technology and data analysis can effectively be used to inform and implement organization strategy. The widespread use of information technology and data analysis tools is having a significant effect on how organizations inform and implement their strategies. Organizations today have more transactional data than they have ever had before about their customers, suppliers and their operations. The ability to capture and store all of this data has been made possible by advances in information technology. With the help of the Internet of Things, sensors embedded in physical objects such as mobile phones, motor vehicles, smart energy meters, RFD tags and tracking devices all create and communicate data that is shared across wired and wireless networks. Similarly, Internet search indexes such as Google Trends can be sources of data for analysis. Data analytics refers to the ability to analyse and reveal insights in data that had previously been too difficult or costly to analyse due to the volume and variability of the data involved. The aim of data analytics software is to extract insights from unstructured data or from large volumes of data. Being able to extract insights from data is of crucial importance. For example, data may help organisations to understand the complexity of the environment in which they are operating and to respond swiftly to the opportunities and threats presented by it or to develop new insights and understand what customers need or want. Part B. Describe big data and discuss the opportunities and threats big data presents to organisations. According to the definition by SAS, big data is a popular term used to describe the exponential growth and availability of data, both structured and unstructured. Opportunities offered by big data to organisations are as follows. Processing greater quantities of data should allow organisations to identify new trends and patterns relevant to the organisation's success. Patterns may give a deeper understanding of customer requirements. The ability to process large data sets of data in real time allows organisations to respond to changing conditions faster. Organisations increasingly have access to more diverse types of data Historically, data has tended to be in a structured form, for instance, can be stored in databases. However, there has been a growth in unstructured data, as in not stored in a database, which organisations have access to. Big data can provide organisations with an increasing amount of accurate and detailed performance data, in real or almost real time. By analysing the variability in performance, and the causes of that variability, organisations can then manage performance to higher levels. Threats associated with big data are as follows. Capturing and storing greater quantities of data increases the scope for things to go wrong. Attempts by hackers to access organisational data sets are on the increase as such groups look to exploit the value of the data held. The widespread use of IT infrastructures in capturing and storing data in digital form presents a challenge in keeping it safe from the threats posed by computer viruses. The threats posed by hackers and viruses raise legal considerations, especially if stolen or corrupted data relates to individual customers. The organisation may face legal action if it is found that its measures for protecting data were not deemed sufficient. The use of big data increases the danger that an organization's management spends longer trying to determine the value and patterns within the vast amounts of data they have captured instead of concentrating on running the organization. There is a focus on finding correlations between data sets and less of an emphasis on causation. The diverse types of data available present a challenge to organisations as they need to find ways of capturing, storing and processing the data. 
if data is too big, moves too fast, or doesn't fit within an organization's existing information systems, then in order to gain value from it, an organization needs to find an alternative way to process that data. As a result, organizations may feel compelled to invest in upgrading their IT infrastructures to capture and store more data, even if the benefits of such an approach have not been fully considered. For that data to be beneficial for decision-making, it needs to be reliable and truthful. If the data is not truthful, this will reduce the value of any decisions which are informed by it. Part C. Identify and analyse relevant data for decisions about new product developments, marketing and pricing. When making decisions about new product development, marketing and pricing strategies, senior management will want relevant data which will help them to answer the following key questions. For new product development decisions, relevant questions are as follows. What are the potential costs of launching new products? What are the potential benefits of launching new products? Will new product development help the organisation achieve its objectives? Can the organisation develop existing products or is a totally new product required? Does the organisation have the required skills and competencies needed? Should the organisation discontinue existing products? For marketing decisions, relevant questions will be How should new and existing products or services be promoted? Through which channels should the product or service be delivered? What features does the product or service need to have to meet customer needs? How important will the organisation's people be in developing and delivering the product or service to customers? Will organisational processes need to be updated to produce and sell the product or service? How might competitors respond to an initiative to the introduction of new products or services? What might the impact of the competitor response be? Which customers are the most important or profitable for us? Why are some groups of customers more profitable than others? Deliberations related to pricing decisions are as follows. How is customer demand for a product or service likely to vary at different prices? How will this affect profits and cash flows? How does the proposed price fit with the organization's overall generic strategy? How does it compare to competitors' prices? How do competitors' costs compare with ours? Are competitors vulnerable because of their cost structure or product or service portfolio? Part D. 